Hello, the name's Tyler. The A is silent. My professional profession is influencer Instagram baddie. If I, Tyler, the professional Instagram baddie can compost, you can too. Before we continue, we must go inside because my celebrity dermatologist says that I can't be outside for more than 10 minutes without sunblock or an umbrella. Come on. Okay. If any composting experts would like to add any tips into this video, please do. I'm only speaking from my experience and how I was able to compost at home and teach myself, so, you know, let us know. This is a lot of information, so please grab a snack, grab a notepad, write some notes, or maybe just reference this video whenever you need to. What is composting? Composting is essentially taking organic materials and putting it through a specific process so that it decomposes back into earth. Why do we want to compost? Unfortunately, food scraps and organic material that would typically break down if put back into earth does not break down properly in landfill. This actually creates methane. Methane, greenhouse gases, etc. Climate change. If you don't believe in climate change, then why the heck are you here? I may have you interested in composting if I told you that you don't have to take out the trash as often. Overall, this will reduce your waste, make nutrient-rich soil that you can then put into your own garden or literally chuck it back into the earth. Whatever fancies your boat. Composting materials consist of carbon, nitrogen, water, air. Yep. There are many different ways to compost, but I will be focusing solely on the Cornell method, which uses heat. Step one, creating your compost bucket. This method I have found to be the cheapest and most appropriate for small apartment balconies or small homes, because let's be honest, I don't feel like spending $80 on a rotating compost bin off of Amazon. I have my bucket propped up on a couple of two by fours because I found that this will help with aeration process. Firstly, you're gonna get a bucket that you don't use, preferably with a lid that snaps on. They have a lot of these at the thrift store or you can check your mom's basement or maybe ask your neighbor whoever, but you really shouldn't have to spend more than $5 on this. Depending on the size of your bucket, I believe you're gonna drill about 10 to 20 holes. You don't want them to be too big. Um, I don't know what size. Ooh, don't make them bigger than the size of this pencil. Now you have your compost bin. The following materials that you will need are twigs, a bag of organic soil, organic, none of that fertilizer or shit, especially if you're gonna put this back into a garden. No, no, no. Organic. Organic. And then your compost materials, which I will explain in a minute. You will also need a garden shovel. You could probably just use an old container to like move the dirt around. I just happen to have a garden shovel. And then you'll need a freezer, which I'll explain that as we go along. As mentioned before, you'll have materials that are your nitrogen, which are your greens, and carbon, which are your browns. Nitrogen is essentially things like grass clippings, food scraps, organic material. <laughs> carbon is gonna be things like leaves, twigs, dirt, cardboard, shredded up, egg cartons etc. It's important to have a good balance of the two along with aeration and water to create a good, healthy, balanced compost. All right, we're gonna start with the basics. In my experience when starting this compost bin, I have found that it's best to use this layering method. Keep in mind, you only have to do this when you first start your bin. You don't have to continue to do this. I firstly put twigs and sticks at the bottom my next layer ended up being soil. Uh, not too much, like just a little sprinkle to cover the sticks. I like to keep a bag of soil on hand because it will help with compost pins that could potentially go off balance. Then I will layer on a good amount of leaves. On top of that, I will then take some grass clippings. So now we're going in, we have our carbon and now we're getting into our nitrogen, which is grass clippings, and then I will go ahead and add in my first layer of food scraps, which I'm going to get into in the next section. But after that, I will then layer on another pile of browns, preferably cardboard paper, leaves, a little bit of dirt. Important, do not 
do not add any animal products these will rot and smell really badly i have found one exception and that is egg shells not the yolk just the shell these are actually very nutrient rich for your pile and so that is something that you don't have to throw away animals and humans unfortunately can only be composted commercially so unfortunately <laughs> How to compost your food. Before you add any food scraps, I have found that it's best to put your food scraps in the freezer the day before. I have learned that we actually bring home fruit flies and so those compost pails that sit on the counter, this is like a breeding ground for fruit flies. And so I prefer putting them in the freezer because this does start the breakdown process. And then the day that I'm gonna go and add those scraps to the pile, I just let it sit out for a few hours to thaw out. Fruit flies are extremely annoying to deal with, so just freeze your scraps. Always cut your food and your browns into small pieces especially because you're working with a smaller bin when you have bigger chunks of food it takes a long time to decompose if you have that closer to the surface you are risking it from rotting so just cut your food into small pieces even your moldy food chop it up and then add it so when you add in your food you're gonna want to move the top layer over add the food in the middle and then layer the browns back over top this is gonna help along with proper stirring aeration and watering your pile every couple of days this will create heat which will then decompose your food yay <laughs> i recommend composting every three days or so because i have found that when i mix and add too much it actually allows heat to escape and then my food doesn't break down. So I really recommend not doing it every single day. You will have to play around with the different timing depending on your climate and schedule. So start with three days. <laughs> Keeping a balanced pile. I mentioned before the oxygen and water play important roles in this. Here's why. It's best to water your compost pile every couple of days. I usually do this when I add in the food. You don't want the pile to be too wet or too dry. I have found that it's okay to have a small thin layer on the top be dry, but the rest of it is relatively damp. The pile is basically like a house plant, the soil, you know, it's not too wet, not too dry. This will help create the aeration process and do its magic. There's some scientific explanation how this works and I'm not credible to even say how. It just trust me it does. So the order in which I compost goes as follows. Hi. <laughs> this is how I compost. I remove the lid. Wow. Then. Wow. Then you take your trusty shovel and you're going to move one layer over to this side. Right. Then, going to take your compost, check it in. You can see like this needs to be cut down into pieces, y'all. So that's why I always bring those scissors. And we're just cutting, cutting up. Right. Remember, these are from the freezer. Okay. more browns. Oh, uh, let me uh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I need water. You wait right here. <laughs> then you're gonna sprinkle on top. It was a kind of a lot because it was already really dry, but yeah. Oh wait, that's back in there. Okay. There we go. All done.
then. It's important to take note how soggy your food is that you are adding. If you're looking to compost food that has sauce on it, maybe some spaghetti that's gone bad, I recommend actually washing the sauce off and just composting the noodle parts. I just think that that way you don't risk the pile getting too soggy. All right, signs that your compost is off balance. Your pile should smell like dirt or soil. If you just added some food in there, there's the possibility that you'll get that food smell, but after a day or two, you shouldn't smell it. If you're worried about smells, I really recommend adding coffee grounds on every single time that you put your food in. This is actually very nutrient rich for a compost pile. You can actually request coffee grounds from your local coffee shop because it's likely that they just throw them away. So if your pile becomes off balance, you can usually tell because it kind of smells stinky or sour. At this point, you need to assess your pile. Are your food chunks too big? Big. If it's too dry, uh, you probably need to add water in between the layers. If it's too wet, you'll probably need to mix in more browns like paper bags, hair, leaves. It's normal to have the layers on top a lighter brown, whereas the bottom layers are a dark black color. That's a very healthy, nutrient-rich compost. This can take up to months to get, so keep that in mind. If you want to add the compost to the garden eventually, you'll have to stop adding in the one bin and start a new bin. From there, you can filter through the compost and chuck any bigger pieces back into the pile and you'll have just the soil left that you can just literally chuck into a garden and mix it with the other dirt. If it becomes off balance, it's not too late to fix. Scoop out the food that's smelling badly and throw it away. From there, you can add in browns and coffee grounds and mix it really well and then wait a week or two before trying again. Things that you can compost. I will leave a link down below of a list of the various different things that you can compost, but the following things that I compost are food scraps that are non-animal, leaves from the yard, dying house plants, cardboard that's usually ripped into pieces, toilet paper rolls, toilet paper only if it's cotton, hair, compostable shipping materials only if it's labeled home compost safe, dryer lint, only if your clothes are made of natural fibers like cotton, hemp, bamboo, and if you use natural laundry detergents, seeds, natural loofah sponges, and even moldy food. All of this cut into small pieces. Some final notes. Some things take a while to compost, and I'm talking like months or even seasons. These things can usually consist of natural fabrics, avocado seeds, uh, burlap bag, that took me a while to compost. Just keep these items towards the bottom and you'll be fine. When it's time to use the compost in the garden, you may have to file through, file? You may have to filter through the compost soil and pull out the bigger chunks and put it back into your new compost bin. If your pile becomes off balance, it's very easy to fix by scooping out the food, as I mentioned before, and trying again. If you're pile ends up getting infested with flies, it's actually very easy to fix. You just want to stir your pile really well and then layer it with a thick amount of browns. Uh, this usually means that you have food exposed at the top, so that's why the flies are in there. They should be gone in a day or two. As for winter months, <laughs> it is a bit harder to keep your pile hot because it freezes. I also forgot to note that there is a specific temperature that your pile is supposed to reach in order for the food to break down. And I used to have a thermometer to measure this, but honestly, you can just feel the heat come off the pile and that's how you know the pile is working. I will leave a link down below with tips on maintaining it in a colder weather, in colder weather because I live in a dry climate and it rarely gets cold here in Vegas. Even if you only compost in the spring or summer, you're still making a huge difference on the amount of waste that you're throwing out. Check your local universities, Whole Foods, or even pig farms. They might be taking compost from people if this method doesn't work for you. Ultimately, your compost pile should be treated like a house plant. You have to take care of it and watch it every couple of days. It becomes fun and easy once you get the hang of it, especially because you see how much food and materials that you're reducing from throwing out in landfill, so. Yeah. If you have a pickup composting system in your city, you are some lucky people. <laughs> that is it. That's all I have on composting. I feel like I still miss some stuff. So 
please, please, please leave questions down below because I'm sure there's something that I missed. Tyler, the Instagram baddie, will make another appearance in part two if there's more questions to be answered. It would mean a lot if you guys share this with someone who's interested in composting because I put a lot of effort and work into this and I've had to film this like four times because of complications and so I would really appreciate it <laughs> if you liked it or shared it or I don't know like told someone about it okay oh let me get back into character hold on Taylor had to leave but she wanted me to let you know that she appreciates you taking this time to watch this video and please like subscribe do all that sh <laughs> thanks for watching bye